Thank you, Senator Kim. Senator Blackwell, you are recognized. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that, and congratulations to each of you on your nominations. Um, I know you will get through this process, and we look forward to having you confirmed and getting hard to work for the American people. Uh, Mr. Jordan, I want to come to you. Um, and Senator Kentwell mentioned Oak Ridge National Lab, the supercomputing capacity, the fastest in the country. And of course, NOAA and Oak Ridge have had a partnership that they have been working on that uh, trying to do some modeling on um, predictions for disasters and severe weather events. And I think that these collaborations are important for the American people and for helping us to come past some of these extreme weather events and to, to be able to um, avoid some of the catastrophes that we have seen. We all have, are grieving for those families in Texas, and what a catastrophic loss. And then we just, um, late September last year, when Hurricane Helene stalled out there between North Carolina and Tennessee, and we had eight counties in Tennessee. We had rivers cresting as high as 29 feet, 20 feet, 19 feet. 15 feet, and tremendous loss of life. And we're still reeling, and uh, the rebuilding is taking place. Debris removal is still taking place. So the impact is felt for years and years. It takes so much time to recover. So I want to return to some of these partnerships that can help us. And I would like for you to talk a little bit about how you would prioritize partnerships like the one between NOAA and Oak Ridge National Labs so that we are ba better able to predict what is taking place. Thank you for the question, Senator. Um, so I, I agree the partnership with Oak Ridge uh, and NOAA is, uh, is, is, a, is a very important one. And uh, I look forward to, to working with you and the committee and NOAA to strengthen that partnership so that we can utilize the expertise at Oak Ridge to run our models and do the research to make sure we have the best forecast. And then again, as you were mentioning, push that information to local decision makers to take action. We need to- Okay, and drill down for a minute uh, on that data transfer to these local EMS, these local first responders. They're always the first ones that show up. It's followed by the state and then followed by the federal government. But drill down on that partnership. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for that. So it's important to, again, get as close as possible to the local emergency managers and in some instances, weather service employees embed with emergency managers because they have the local expertise to know specifics of topography and how things can be affected. So you would encourage that embedding? Yes, Senator. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Jacobs, I want to come to you. Um, Memphis? The lower Mississippi River is the lifeblood of barge traffic and port commerce, uh, not only for Tennessee, but also the entire Mid-South and the Mississippi River area. How would you ensure NOAA's forecasting tools for river navigation services uh, and data such as water level forecasts, sediment mapping, navigation charts, and so that they're supporting the needs of the ports and the barge operators in the lower Mississippi River. Uh, thank you for the question. So the Ocean Service does an amazing job uh, with their ports program, as well as running a lot of models. So the River Forecast Centers, the National Water Center run the, the water models for this. And there's a lot of development on coastal model uh, 
as well as the gap sensors. Uh, I myself spent a lot of time using their data with my boat. So it's very, very important, very high priority. Okay, and I have one other question for you. Senator Cruz and I wrote to NOAA urging um, it to recognize the critical, undersea, the critical role of undersea cables and their necessity in our communications infrastructure. And the cables undergo rigorous state and federal permitting, as you're well aware, and they've proven time and again to have a minimal environmental footprint. So in response to those concerns, NOAA instituted a two-year pause on special use permits for submarine cables in newly designated marine sanctuaries so that it could review the category. And in line with this administration's efforts to streamline permitting, do you agree that NOAA should permanently exempt undersea cable deployment, maintenance, and repair from duplicative sanctuary-specific permitting requirements that risk delaying infrastructure deployment and undermining our national resilience? Um, thank you for the question. Um, I'm, because I'm not there, I don't have access to that information, but if confirmed, I would definitely love to learn more about it and, and support the priorities as best I can. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Senator Blackburn. And